much. So thank you everyone for joining and hi, I'm Amber from Influencer Updates on Instagram and this is my weekly live where I'm going to give you a bit of an update on some of the top stories for the week with influencers followed by a Q&A where I'm going to ask, I mean, answer all of your questions. So three updates this week. We've got Chloe Fisher, Austin and Claudia from Love Island AU and Tina Provis, also from Love Island AU. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so the first story is Chloe Fisher. So this week she posted some stories where she took some children to a circus on the Gold Coast, the Hudson Circus, and they had animals in their circus. And Chloe was filming and saying, you know, it's so hot in here. It's about 40 to 45 degrees. And she was filming like sweat dripping off the children's faces and saying it's just beyond hot in the tent. And then in the next story, she was showing that there were horses performing in front of her. So animal rights activists, they got it. I think it was called Warrior for Animals. I think that's their Instagram page. They you know, messaged a few influencer accounts, including mine and said, you know, can you please run this story? And I thought it did sound like a very big, interesting story. So I decided to post this one publicly. And yeah, there was a lot of people calling out Chloe for attending the circus. But I mean, people are going to attend circuses. They're going to attend zoos. They're going to attend circuses. And also the fact that she was promoting the circus, I suppose. People were a bit annoyed about that, but I don't believe she did promote the circus. Like she didn't say which circus it was or anything. Like it was definitely not a paid promotion, but I think that the blame lays with the Hudson Circus. Like they are the ones who should be caring for these animals. They should not be having them perform in a 45 degree circus tent. I believe that Chloe or maybe Elodie who I think Elodie's child was at the circus with Chloe. I think Elodie ended up commenting somewhere, maybe it was on my post, that the temperature was only 27 degrees that day, not 40 to 45. But I think Chloe was saying it was 40 degrees outside and at least 45 degrees inside. But regardless of what the actual temperature was, if the sweat was running down children's faces, it was probably too hot for the horses to be performing. And another photo came out and it was posted by Warrior for Animals where they saw like horses looking not in a very good form out the back of the circus. So yeah, that was all a bit disappointing that the circus would do that. <laughs> and yeah, I guess Chloe as the messenger and also as a famous face, she copped probably a lot of the brunt of that, which I don't know, some people think she should, but I personally don't think that she should be copying the hate for that. And someone asked me today, if she contacted me personally and surprisingly, no, like a lot of people, a lot of the stories I run, the influencer will contact me and say, take this down. But surprisingly, she did not ask me to take it down and she didn't block me either. Unlike M Davies last week, I ran a story on her and she blocked me, which yeah, that really sucks. So that's that story. <laughs> um, the second most popular story of the week was Claudia and Austin from Love Island season, maybe three or four. They were the winners of, Love Island, Australia. They have done like this little apartment tour where they were showing that their apartment in Sydney is $650 a week. I've posted this on subscribers, by the way. That's probably why you may not have seen this one. So yeah, they're paying $650 a week for their Sydney apartment. Austin literally, it's a loft apartment and Austin literally cannot stand in the loft because it's so small. Like his probably quite a tall person, but the ceiling of the loft is so small, he can't fit up there. It was meant to be their bedroom, but because he can't fit up there, they've now had to put their bed downstairs and the loft is just wasted space. So the apartment is therefore so tiny. He also mentioned that they're not allowed to cook in the apartment, which that is the mind boggling part of it all. I would say it's like a fire safety sort of thing. Um, Claudia said that they didn't know that when they chose to rent the apartment, but Austin showed that when they do want to cook, they have like this hot plate thing that they plug into the wall, like an electric hot plate, like an electric frying pan it is, and they cook on their balcony. So yeah, that's what's making me think it must be like a fire code thing. Maybe because it's a loft, they don't have a range hood or something. Not sure, but it was pretty shocking that they pay $650 a week for that apartment. And also, I guess because it's so small and it really had no storage, like it was just interesting to see the apartment. It looked very messy kind of thing. Like influencers usually show these very glamorous lives, but yeah, it, it looked far from glamorous. So 
hopefully that's all working okay all right and the third update yeah so tina Probus from love island australia as well she was also a winner in the season before austin and claudia i believe so she shared that she received some racist dms from another blue tick person who was on a reality tv show so he wrote to her she didn't expose the person but he wrote to her totally seen you in bayfield's bottle shop today and just had to follow and she wrote back to him you have a ring emoji in your bio meaning like why are you messaging me like sort of flirty like his text came across as flirty because he put like a emoji at the end <laughs> and she wrote you literally like you have a ring emoji in your bio and then apparently it was like months later he then wrote back to that saying you know i and just messaging you, you shouldn't have made such a big deal of it and finish the message with being a local Australian, your type are not what we are into. So that's the racist part. Like she's assuming that means your type as in she has like an Asian ethnicity background, like she is Australian and yeah, she just has a bit of an Asian background. And um, she's assuming that's what the your type is referring to. And she said she like was telling everybody that she's been putting up with this her whole life, this racism, and it's just not okay. And everyone's like, you need to call out the person, which she didn't. But she scribbled out the name and the photo. And Super Sleuths, of course, have again I've posted pictures in subscribers, but Super Sleuths have like picked apart the pictures and revealed that it is Pete Palmer from Million Dollar Island. So. Not somebody that I know of, but he is, it looks like he's married with two kids and it's now not even a problem that, the problem is not now that he messaged her about, you know, in a flirty way or whatever. It's more just the racism that is really not appropriate. He also had some like jobs and stuff listed in his bio, which he's now taken them out and put his profile on private, which is a good move. But yeah, that is pretty horrible that Tina's had to deal with that all of her life and is still dealing with it now. Anyway, that's some, I gave really long updates this week. So I'm going to scroll to the top and answer all of your questions. So as I said before, Sam Guggenheimer and Caleb Paul to update. That is always such a big question. So Sam did confirm this week that she has split with um, Caleb Poulter. She confirmed that on her podcast. Oh yeah, people are saying it's Saturday. Why are you saying it's Friday? Sorry, I always do my lives on Friday night, but I didn't yesterday because it was a public holiday and people celebrate that or mourn in different ways and I figured it was best if I run my live on a Saturday night. Love your shirt, thank you. It's not pajamas tonight actually, it's a t-shirt I got from Seed. Did you see Hudson Circus latest post? No I didn't but I really need to. I'm guessing it's in response to the Chloe Fisher horse performing situation. People are saying that my voice is going in and out again this week, but when I did the YouTube update, I mean the YouTube like upload last week, I couldn't tell anything wrong with my voice. So I'm not really sure it must be certain people's phones. Any influencers celebrating Australia Day this year? Not that I've seen. So that's really good to see that like over the years, less and less people are celebrating Australia Day or if they are celebrating it, they're doing it privately. I think that um, I've noticed even like a lot of events in Geelong where I live, they're not calling them Australia Day events anymore. They're calling them just like public holiday events or family fun day events. Like I think it's pretty clear that by now everybody thinks that the date should just be changed and yeah we should just move on from there I suppose what was the M Davies story I missed it so M Davies she did I was posting this last week so she did a try on video where she was trying on her best friend's engagement ring before her friend had been proposed to and there's a lot of people that say that that is very taboo to try on an engagement ring as an unmarried woman. And then also people saying that it's really mean to try it on when it's like brand new out of the box and then she's trying it on before her friend has even been proposed to. 
But yeah, there was there were a lot of different opinions on that. Some supporting M and some saying, oh, that was really bad that M did that. Uh, what else have I got? Sorry, sometimes people write stuff in here that I think, well, I can't really say that because I don't know if it's true. And it would be defamatory if it's not true. How uh, how is um, Austin and Claudia's home livable if you can't cook in there? Well, yeah, I've been Googling for more details on this and I can't find anywhere that there's any houses in Australia that you're not allowed to cook in. And if there's any legalities around that, very strange. What do you think of Claudia and Austin? Well, I just don't think about them at all, really. I mean... I was really interested in Claudia's brand. She has like a product brand that she's released and it was making, no, it was um selling mugs. So she was going to sell like unique mugs, but I think she did one drop and it was just like three natural colored mugs, I believe, just like a pale beige mug, a brown mug and a darker brown mug. And that was like her first collection. And I sort of thought huh, for a unique mug company, these are very bland. But yeah, I would like to see more from the brand. But yeah, they did sell out, so that was really good for her. Sammy Robinson update. So no, I haven't got any updates. I was saying, I think last week, that there were rumours that she... Oh no, I think I put this on subscribers as well. Like someone sent to me that they saw her out with a different person, not Harrison. And then, yeah, I don't know. There's been more rumours since then of like... She hasn't been posting Harrison much, so I feel like something's going on with her dating life. She also recently did, or One Mile, Sammy's brand, recently did a collaboration with Cool Cabanas. And I thought that that was the most random collaboration, but why not? I mean, maybe on the Sydney beaches, those Cool Cabanas are very popular. One Mile probably has like a beach resort sort of collection. It was just like a blue and white striped Cool Cabana, so it goes with the brand. <laughs> Can you give us some juicy blinds? Well, I did post on subscribers today that someone was asking me, do you have, like, do you know much goss that you haven't told us sort of thing? And yes, I know so much stuff that I don't tell people. And I was saying it's mainly because of legal reasons. Like I don't want to be sued if these things aren't proven as true, but also influencers, they tell me a lot of things. It's very surprising how many influencers messaging message me telling me things that are absolutely huge news and like pregnancy news for example like sarah's day I've, I've said this story before like sarah's day messaged me one time telling me she was pregnant before she had announced it publicly and yeah i always don't know what to do in those situations because i'm like well i would love to tell the world but also i don't want to take that from her and also i'm like is this a test <laughs> but then other influencers just message me random stuff like I don't know Adele Marie this is not her messaging me but Adele Marie recently I posted a picture of the guy that she's dating and you know everybody's been waiting to see a picture because she hasn't posted one yet and then randomly she messaged me and she's like I can confirm it's him and I was like oh my gosh thank you like I don't know I think it's so I really enjoy when they me me message me and like they like the they seem to like the account and even if it's not that they like the account, but they, they just understand PR. Like I'm not trying to bring these influences down. I'm trying to keep them relevant and talk about them. And I enjoy them and I want all of you to enjoy them too. But yeah, I did post some extra blind items today in subscribers, but they're ones that I can't, I haven't confirmed. I don't have proof of them. So I can't confirm the names because of the risk of being sued, but Yes, there's some more blind items and subscribers today. And if you do want to subscribe, there is a link in my story I posted today and also in my bio. Sorry, that was a really long answer. Oh, someone's saying they really love my page and all the effort I put into it. Thank you. I feel like I do put in so much effort, <laughs> but because I love it. Why does everyone have an issue with Emmy Lou? She seems lovely. I totally agree. I totally agree she seems lovely. And I've met her in real life and she was lovely. And I get that she might have a tax debt, but I don't know how that affects any of us. I, I just don't know. And people always say to me, oh, but this, this, and this happened. And I think, well, again, that's 
not really that bad. Like someone was saying she brought out face shields during COVID and charged a bomb for them, like $30 each or something. And I sort of thought, well, if people want to pay $30, why does that matter? I, I don't know. I don't know why there's so much hate. Do you have any podcast guest appearances in the works? Maybe so dramatic. I do not have podcast guest appearances in the works, but I have spoken to Megan Pacetto before about appearing on So Dramatic and it's going to happen, but we're, we just sort of don't know what angle to take because I've done a few like interviews, I suppose, where people want to know about me firstly, and then they just sort of ask like the same sort of questions about the account. And that was great for the first few because people wanted to know stuff, but now we're sort of like, well, what should we do next? Because we want to make it a bit different. If you have any ideas, let me know, and maybe that's what we'll end up doing. But I am going to be at, an, at a media event soon. So it's like an event where media people attend, and it's invite only, so like the public can't buy tickets or anything. And there's going to be me speaking at it, as well as influencer Kurt Coleman and the owner of One Day Dream Management, so she, Prue Corrigan, she's going to be speaking at it as well. And the three of us are going to get up the front. We've done like some Zoom meetings where we've discussed what we're going to talk about. And yeah, that should be really fun to just like network and yeah, just see what the other two have to say, to say. And we're also all doing a Zoom session soon where we're going to be learning about children and social media. So it's going to be for us to all learn just like about children as influencers and children being in like their parents' videos and stuff and the effects that that might have on them later in life. So a psychologist is running that and yeah, we're all going to attend that Zoom session, which will be interesting. Do influencers ever try and rat out other influencers? No, I don't believe that's ever happened. <laughs> How many people ended up signing up to your subscribers? A lot, <laughs> a real lot. Um, I was much, very surprised by how many people signed up. I have shared the exact number with subscribers, but I'm finding that if I share this sort of stuff publicly, it's just um, like ammunition. Like people message me and they're just like, eh, you're such a fraud, like you're ripping people off. And it's like, well, I'm not actually ripping people off. Like people pay a monthly fee. They can cancel it if they don't like it and, I think one person has cancelled so far and I'm assuming it's a mistake because everybody's loving it so far. There is over 2,000 people that have signed up. I'll tell you that much. Do you think you'll ever be sued? No, I do not think I'll ever be sued and I hope not. <laughs> it's really interesting. There's not very many like influencer questions this week. I feel like it's been a very quiet week in influencer world. Thoughts on Michaela following Attis's new girlfriend, but her not following Nick back? Well, I do believe that it is Attis's girlfriend, firstly. Jem, I believe her name is. There was like a Reddit post back in November where they all put everything together and found that it was this Jem person. And you can see in Anna's vlog, she's in some of them, just like the side of her or like her pants or her phone case. And that matches up with the photos on Jem's account. So yeah, I confirmed that I believe that yes, that is Addis's girlfriend. Thoughts on Mick following her? Well, I mean, Mick recently did buy I Heart Addis number plates, which is very awkward for his new girlfriend. And I think that, I don't know, what's maybe it's a power move to follow her. I'm not really sure. And yeah, it's a bit weird. I'm surprised that Jem hasn't gone private actually, because I feel like Addis tries to keep everything very quiet. But yeah, I don't know. I'd be feeling very awkward if my boyfriend's ex-girlfriend was Michaela Tester and she started following me on Instagram, that's for sure. <laughs> Bronzed by Soph has written in. Interestingly, that came up a few months ago. So Bronzed by Soph, I believe, is Sofa Dofa's future brand. I think she's going to be launching a fake tanning brand in the distant future. I think she'd be focusing on All For Mimi at the moment and she's going to be releasing a fake tan brand one day. Oh, thank you. People here are saying that close friends subscribers is worth it. <laughs> Why'd you turn off comments on the Chloe Fisher post? I turned them off just because everyone was fighting with each other. It's so annoying. Like I log on and there's like a hundred new comments and I just like quickly scroll a few and it's literally people fighting with each other. And I think this is not what this page is about. Like I did not create this post or this page for people to come on here and fight with each other. Is it hard to become an influencer? No. Firstly, it is not hard to become an influencer, but it is hard 
to maintain longevity as an influencer. <laughs> so I think that, yeah, there's a lot of influencers, especially micro influencers with like smaller followings. It's easy to get a paid job. But I get offered, I mean, I suppose I do have quite a significant following, but even on my TikTok where I've got 10,000 followers, I get offered free things all the time. I get offered even paid jobs, which I say no to because it's just not what I want to do. But so it's not hard to become an influencer. But yeah, the longevity is difficult. Like you've really got to stay relevant. You've got to create drama. You've got to be in the drama. You've got to be networking. You've really got to put yourself out there. You've got to share so much of your life. Like most people wouldn't want people knowing all this stuff about their private life. So yeah, I definitely think, yes, no, it's not hard to become an influencer, but yes, it's hard to stay relevant. What is your opinion on Tattle? Only reason I came across your page is because an influencer was talking about trolls on that page. It's savage. Not going to lie, some are funny, but others are just so wrong. I totally agree with that um, opinion. I agree that some of the threads or some of the posts are funny and others are just so wrong. Like recently I saw people, someone sent me that people were talking about Ashley Bynes's children. Oh yeah, so Ashley was wearing a bikini at the beach with her son Taj and somebody, so I'm trying, trying to remember what the screenshot was. Somebody had said that Ashley is creating a PORN addiction for her son by dressing that way in front of him. Yeah, that's what it said. And I thought that is absolutely disgusting. Like to be speculating about what is he like eight? Like to be speculated, speculating about his future addictions caused by his mum in a bikini. I was just shocked by that. But yeah, of course, some of them are funny. Like sometimes it's funny to laugh about people. Like um, my sister recently, she apparently I've got a tattle post now and I don't want to read it, of course, because I don't want any insecurities in my head about anything. Like I don't get insecure about anything, but I just I don't want to read it. Like, what's the point? And so she's like, oh, I'm desperate to read it. So she read it and she was saying that there's heaps of comments about the size of my forehead. <laughs> I've never had a problem with my forehead. Nobody's ever told me I've had a big forehead, but maybe I do. But it's just really funny that people, like, I think it's really funny that people care about the size of my forehead. <laughs> I don't know. I, I thought that was very funny. What do you think is going on with Steph, Claire Smith and Josh? Well, she said this week that she is doing a podcast with him and she's wanting questions sent in. So I think that we're going to get a little bit of details very soon. I feel like they're going through a rough patch, which is totally normal in relationships. I'm not saying that anything bad is going on, but yeah, I feel like we're going to get some details on that soon. Surely Dodsey and Ruby Tuesday Matthews are done. I do not believe that they are like, Everyone always says this and then like a few days later, he'll pop up in her stories. So he was just in her stories recently. So I don't believe that they are done. I think that they are still together. Do you think Shani Grimmond has money problems? She's gone back old sponsors and only seems to post when it's to make money now. Not quite sure what that means, but um, I don't, oh, do, does she have money problems? I think not. I think she does not have money problems by most people's standards, but I believe she earns a lot less money than what she used to. So in her heyday, she would have been making so much money, like every brand wanted to work with her. But now she's very, maybe she's selective about the brands she works with because she does seem to work with very big brands still like Mac and Glassons and things. But uh, yeah, I do agree that she only seems to post when she wants to make money now. Same with like posting about her own brand. People want to see even like TikTok vlogs about her life, but she just, she just gives us nothing and it really sucks. <laughs> oh, people are just talking about the ATO and it's, sorry, it's just a bit boring to me. I guess because I'm an accountant, like I just see this stuff all the time that people owe tax. Like actually that reminds me, I've got a $2,800 bill. I've got to pay by the 28th, which is tomorrow. So I better get online and pay that. So that is because I have to pay tax on the money that I earn from this account. Yes. So for the quarter, I got a quarterly tax bill of $2,800 and I need to pay it. And if I don't pay it, you're all going to slam me by the looks of these comments. <laughs> I'll be paying it. I promise. Thoughts on Sophie Keisha's breakup. Well, yeah, it really sucks. Like what else is there to think? Like really sucks, especially because she went public with it only quite recently. They've been together for about a year, but to go public quite recently and then now it's over. 
she is in Bali for her birthday and looks like she's having a great time. Probably a good way to get over a breakup, really. Uh, what else have we got? Nobody's mentioned it, but um, the launch of Georgie Stevenson's Rise Up this week, like that was big news on subscribers. Like everyone seemed really interested in that. So yeah, Georgie Stevenson has announced that on the 8th of February, she is launching an app. So it is like a meditation and short courses, I believe she said. Um, it's $40 a month, but if you subscribe like in the foundation month, I think it was like $223 or something for a year, which is $18.50 per month. So ends up being quite good value, but people were very shocked by the $40 a month price. Um, but yeah, I think that a lot of people will sign up and I think that it sounds like a really good thing that she's got going on. It also reminds me, sorry, I don't know why I'm so hunched. It reminds me a lot of Chloe Zepp's app, Bloom. So I think that, yeah, there'll be a really good uptake with subscribers to that around like wanting to improve their mental health and their well-being and things. Okay, what else? The title thread wasn't even too bad about you, what I read compared to what they wrote about others. Your forehead is not big at all. <laughs> okay, well, that's good to hear that the title thread's not bad. <laughs> that's so funny. Do you think that it's bizarre that Shani Grimman and Michael Finch never capitalized on their big paydays to buy a house and set themselves up? I think that they definitely bought houses. I, in fact, remember when Michael Finch bought an investment property in Melbourne. I think that they both do rent, but I believe they both own houses that they just don't live in. Why? I'm not sure. Maybe just so they can move around a lot. But yeah, I do think that they have set themselves up in ways that they do not post online. And I think that that's a good move not to post that online because people don't seem to like when influencers talk about their success with money. Okay. Thoughts on Ali Gonzalez and her hating children. I mean, I think that that's... She doesn't hate children. I, I can see why people... She's sort of, she's got a, like, she's making the most of this situation where she spoke about why she doesn't want to have children. And I think that she's just like continuing with the publicity of it all. Like people are really liking the drama. My battery is on 1%. So if I cut out, that's why. <laughs> Thank you everyone for signing, I mean, for joining today, of course, <laughs> before it gets cut off. Thoughts on Indy Clinton's Bambi always hurting herself? I haven't noticed that, but I think that it's very normal. I'm guessing Bambi is walking now. Yeah, she'd be walking now. That's the one-year-old. It's so normal for one-year-olds to hurt themselves. Filming it, not so normal. And I assume she's not laughing about it. I hope not anyway, but it's so sad. Like, it's so sad. But yeah, my one-and-a-half-year-old is always hurting herself. <laughs> 